Hi, this is Wendell Odom of SearchSkills.com, and you're watching a video that's a short demo of the Cisco Learning Labs product that Cisco made available in mid-April 2011. So what you see here to start is the main window after I've logged into the service with the package for ICND2 labs. So over on the left are the list of labs. On the right, it gives me a time summary of the time I've consumed of my 25 hours of time. Now I'd already started lab two, so I'm gonna click here where it says continue lab. In the next screen, it hasn't started the timer yet and it's asking me, do I wanna resume the lab? Sure, when I'm ready to go, click resume lab. And this is the main window and it shows the topology that's used inside the lab and some things at the top. First off, the tasks and diagrams list different items. The first four things are the main tasks that you need to do in the lab. And then there's a diagram that you can click to see that. So if you take a look at these tasks, VTP, trunking, VLANs, and then spanning tree. And you can click these other things at the bottom, including down at the very bottom, you can click to see the answer key for the answer according to what the lab exercise expects. Now you can click each of those and see one document, but over just next to it, it says all questions. Translated. That's everything you see in tasks and diagrams in one section. So see here that says task one. If you scroll down a little, uh, partway down it says task two. Scroll down a little, about halfway down it says task three. So that's one big document. Now one of the things that's important with that particular document is this. It probably makes sense if you're worried about using up your 25 hours to do the all questions tab and then use your browser's features to save that web page. And you can essentially save the lab exercise off to your PC, uh, then exit over here on the right, go off and spend five or 10 minutes reading the lab thoroughly, getting a much better understanding of the lab, and then coming back in to do the lab instead of having the clock running while you're trying to read and figure out what the lab says. So that's just a suggestion there. Um, if you're not worried about uh, using up your time, you're good there. So there's help. And there's background info. That's mainly the big picture information about what's going to happen in a particular lab exercise. It's, in this case, a little bit sparse. Um, that's uh, just to let you know what's there. And manage devices is the other item from the top. That's kind of interesting. And let me uh, get it exploded up so it's a little bit more readable here. For each of the accessible devices in the lab pod, you can click to connect to the console port of the device. You can clear the console, which you might want to do if you're having trouble getting into the console. Click this to clear up any problems. Then there's a simulated power cycle, which it takes down and brings up the virtual task. And then reload the configuration to its initial state. So it's good to know, in particular, that you can start back from scratch. So let's take a look. Let's first say look at, let's see, where should we start? Hmm. Let's start with a switch up here. So we click it and I say allow on my Mac here to let it bring up the window and that's a little small to see. So let me resize the window. Sorry, I'm still getting used to uh, resizing to the point where it uh, is visible if you're watching on video. So um, it'd be nice if you could see the characters on the screen. So bear with me. All right, hopefully that's a little bit more visible now. So hit enter, get the command prop, type enable, type the password that is San Fran, all lowercase. And now I'm in enable node on a switch. Show interfaces status shows us the unusual naming standard, Ethernet 00 through 03, 10 through 13, 20 through 23, and so on, which is different from real Cisco switches, but you just gotta get used to it. It's not a big deal. Of course, that's a little hard to see, so let me see if I can get the screen to show up a little bit better here. There we go and maybe get those characters a little bigger. All right, so I'll repeat the command just so in case you couldn't see it before. Those are the interfaces. Now that's typical on these um, virtual switches inside Cisco Learning Labs as they're running on Cisco iOS on Unix. Now show version shows us some interesting things here. For instance, the version says Solaris software. These are running on a Solaris operating system hosted by Cisco with an iOS file name that's unusual compared to real switches. And it was compiled July 2010. So this is an image specifically compiled for Cisco's use with iOS on Unix, for instance. So what else can we see here? Well, let's take a look at one of the routers. Here's a router image. 
So I'll bring up a telnet for that router image as you see here and give me a moment to resize it so it's a little bit more readable. And I'll press enter, type enable, get the sand, whoop, didn't ask us for a password, so no password required there. Now we're in enable mode. So let's take a look at the interfaces here. On this router, there's only four Ethernet interfaces and there are no serial interfaces. Other routers would have serial interfaces as needed. Show version shows a different but otherwise unusual iOS file name. It's 12.4.15 T9, a relatively recent version. Certainly plenty good for uh, any kind of testing or practice you want to do for exams these days. Uh, the config reg down there is uh, hex zero. Let's see if we can change that hardware related thing on a router maybe to 2102 and it doesn't even support the command. We'll do a few question marks here to make sure it doesn't show up in some other format and nope, the config reg command isn't there. That's just a point to make that these iOS images support hardware generic features but not hardware specific features like the config register. All right, we're back at R2 still. Let's try a few commands that on an Ethernet interface that are, again, related to physical settings like the speed on an Ethernet interface. We got rejected. Let's do something similar over here on a switch. Here's Ethernet 00. And we'll try speed 100. It's rejected. Um, speed auto rejected, duplex full. And it also is rejected, but with a more interesting output. Duplex cannot be set. All right, so those are related to what happens at the physical layer. So the switch doesn't support that, but it does support everything that's uh, generic across uh, the switch operating system. So that's pretty much the quick demo. Notice the timer's been running. If you can see those small letters up there, it shows the countdown of time. And when you're tired of it, you click exit. Then you're back to the list of labs over here on the left. Uh, this is indeed the list of labs for the ICND2 authorized Cisco course and uh, those lab names match that course and that's what you get in the icnd2 package click over there to view the details of your time consumption if you want to see where you used up your time uh, you can see that information and yep that is indeed your whirlwind tour of the cisco learning labs when you're done exit and you really are done